find some copper copics on the no longer undead. You deftly slip over the gate and into town. A shiver of cold comes over you. You sense no danger, but even so, you find yourself afraid. I am what once was the Paladin Piotr. The sorrows of this land are my sorrows, and I cannot rest. Thou art a Paladin, and so shall share my fate. Unless ye ease the sorrows of this land and heal the pain. After some rest you feel better. The stone carvings on the dark building seem to writhe in the moonlight. You get the feeling that they are hungry and waiting for something or someone. A sense of great danger and hunger comes from near the door of the massive stone building. You pick up two of the metal weights and put one in each of the baskets. You straighten out your jack. Your legs are too stiff and sore to use this right now. After Ah, you found a hidden safe. Good work. You set up the thieves toolkit and try to disarm any traps that may be on the safe. have successfully disarmed the safe. You crack the safe using the Mark II toolkit. You take the healing potion, throwing dagger, and five crowns someone was foolish enough to leave inside. I don't know. It would be a shame to lose you so soon. The best places to steal from are the most dangerous. I do not think you are ready just yet. Actually, I'm getting used to this shape. I can climb walls and ceilings really, really well now. I can run and be stealthy at the same time. Best of all, I never have to go hungry. I never realized how tasty moldy leftover garlic stew can be. A good thief has many skills he can depend on. Thieving is more than just being in perfect physical and mental condition. Thieving is more than just climbing a rope and a grapnel or the side of a building. It is more than attracting hordes of beautiful women with your debonair style. A good thief practices his knowledge and abilities constantly. There are not many thieves marks left around here. Most have worn away. In a big city where the guild is active, you can find marks all over. Acrobatics is a skill which is much underrated by thieves. A good acrobat can spin his body farther than the best jumper. He can cross a tightrope over the most dangerous chasm. And he can always moonlight as a circus performer in a pinch. There is more to stealth than just sneaking around. You need to know when to hide as well. It also helps to carry oil with you at all times. You never know when you might alert someone as you open a squeaky door. With a little knowledge and the right tools, picking locks is a snap. First you need the right tools. 
That Mark II kit you have that looks suspiciously like mine is perfect for the job. Next, you need keen senses and strong nerves, knowing that any mistake you make could be your last. Lastly, you need plenty of practice. Just don't get yourself killed getting it. That would be very embarrassing. I'm afraid I'm not in shape anymore to teach you the basics. You will need to have someone else show you the ins and outs of pickpocketing. Besides, this is hardly the right place to learn such a thing. You need a city with plenty of rich merchants and tourists to really be a success as a cut purse. Some place such as Silmaria, perhaps. You and I can work together and return this guild to its former glory. New thieves will swarm here to be taught by such master thieves as ourselves. I can teach them well, stealth and hiding, and you can teach them everything else. The Mortavian Thieves Guild will be notorious again. That is, of course, assuming anyone can cross the swamp and avoid sinking into the morass or being dragged to their deaths in order to get here. After I became such as I am, many of the members left. One thief said that I was no longer fit to be chief. After I showed him how fast I could throw daggers with these feet, <laughs> he didn't say much. Never said anything again, as a matter of fact. <laughs> the ones that left said they felt uncomfortable around me. Fools! Do they think this is some sort of brotherhood of man? This is a brotherhood of thieves! They should be uncomfortable around me. Soon it was just me and two others. They decided to explore the castle after the new owner moved in and never returned. So now, there's only me and you. You mean this passage behind me? It leads out of town under the bridge near the gate. You can use it to get out of town, but you cannot get back in. The door can't be opened from the outside. There is a little known secret way into the castle that I will someday reveal to you when I think you are ready. You catch the top of the gate with your grapnel and clamber up the rope. A few moments later, you slip over the gate and into the town. You hear movement on the other side of the door. After a few minutes, you hear someone removing the bar and unlocking the bolts on the other side of the door. They all turn to stare at you, then go back to talking. You get a fine meal of roast lamb garnished with red cabbage. Oh, and uh, liberally flavored with garlic. Lock the door to your room and go in. You awaken as the sun begins to rise.
It's a garlic souffle, more de- Still you remain. Any more weight might strain your muscles. Try working with the weights you already have in the baskets. There's only a certain amount of punishment your body can stand on any given day. Still you remain. It is a wonder you have met. Just in time to witness a magnificent scientific experiment, I have managed to harness the very primal force of lightning at my back and call. Now I shall use it to create life itself. Watch this. Hmm, that was not quite the experimental result I expected. Uh, but never mind that. It is merely a momentary setback in the annals of science. I shall readjust the magnetic electrical stimulation system and try again another day. Understanding and harnessing the power of nature is just one aspect of science. By observing and performing experiments based on the observations, the scientist increases our understanding of the world around us. Here you are, one freshly brewed healing drink. Here you are, one freshly brewed universal poison antidote. My neighbor Nikolai is not actually as old as he now appears. He has been very unhappy since his wife's disappearance some 15 years ago. I can understand his disappointment. She never brought me back the berries I needed for an experiment. Antwerps are truly fascinating species. They reproduce by splitting into a number of tiny antwerps, each with their own genetic code. They cannot split voluntarily, however. They only reproduce when cut or stabbed. My test antwerps came from Spielberg Valley, where there was an antwerp population explosion last spring. I have come to the conclusion that lightning is electrical in nature, which would put it in the realm of fire. Fortunately, there have been an increasing number of storms here lately, so I have been able to harness some of the lightning and store it for experimental use. You tell Dr. Cranium about your first adventure in the school vaguely interested in your tales of the Baron and his children, but his eyes positively light up when you mention the Antwerp. Ah, so you are the Spielberg hero. I went there on an Antwerp gathering expedition a few months ago. The people there are still talking about your adventures. You continue by telling Dr. Cranium of your encounters with the eccentric wizard Erasmus, the deadly kobold magic user, and the ogress Baba Yaga. Turned her into a frog? Oh, such puppycock! There is a perfectly straightforward scientific explanation for all of those events. There is no such thing as magic. You say goodbye. Oh, it is always a pleasure to have one such as you visit. Perhaps I should wait a day or two before resuming my Frankie experiment. It is very important that the right person stay in charge here.
The wyvern has no place to carry treasure. This is one reason why dragon hunting is far more popular. After some rest you feel better. You have a strange, disquieting feeling along with a sense of sorrow, longing and unfulfilled desires as you near the lake. The briny lake seems to draw you towards it. Hello there. Could you help me? This water is so cold and I need someone to help warm me. Why don't you come to my arms so that I can give you a real greeting? I am the Rizalka. Please, take my hand and help me. If you take my hand, I'll be happy to show you what the lake is like. If you take my arms, I'll be happy to talk to you about anything you'd like. You ask what a nice girl like her is doing in a place like this. It's so nice here in the water. Why don't you join me? You wade out to the lake woman and take her in your arms. Her skin is soft but very cold. The lake spirit moans softly as she holds you closer and closer and tighter and tighter, then pulls you down into the lake.